Hey there, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we are back with a new video on how we can set up Superbase project in Flutter. We will also be navigating through the project's interface and will be interacting with different services, including authentication, database, etc. So make sure you watch till end so that you don't miss out anything. But before diving into that, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please make sure you like, share and subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit the bell icon as well. Now you can see on the screen we are on the landing screen of Superbase. From here you need to register your account and then we can access the dashboard from here. I will tap on dashboard. It is our account dashboard. From here we can create different projects. To create a project, first you need to create an organization. Here we can give an organization name. So I will give mine. Let's call it test. And then we will select the type of organization. It will be personal, educational or whatever you give it the name. I will give it personal. Then I have to select a tier. Uh, either we can go with the free plan or we can also go with the other plans. So I will select free and then create organization. Now we are here on create new project screen. From here we can create a project. We will give it a name like if I give it name test project just for testing. Here I will select the theme which is test that we just created. And here I need to give a database password so i will take suggestion from google and let's give it this name so i will copy it in order to save it somewhere so that later i can use it then i have to select a region where my database will be so closest to me will be this south asia mumbai so let's select this one you can select whatever you want i think the price varies according to different regions just like firebase so you can select the one that is convenient for you and now i will tap on create new project and you can see our project has been created here we have some instructions then we can explore the different services we have here here we have the project api keys and url so we'll be using this url and this key to connect with our superbase project here we have the code to connect to superbase we have the code in dart as well that's what we'll be using to initialize and connect to our superbase project if we come down here we have the client libraries that can be used in different technologies for instance we have the flutter here and we can see the documentation of flutter client library from here that's what we'll be using if you are in some other technologies you can also explore the other as well down below we have some code samples or example projects you can see we have a flutter chat app built with superbase and the code is provided by superbase so you can uh, explore the code as well to learn and explore superbase features now from here we will connect to a superbase project for that i will go and open visual studio code and here I will create my Flutter project. So I will enter Flutter, Flutter create, and then it will be superbase underscore test. When this project is created, we will be navigating to the location that will be superbase underscore project, and it will open VS Code in that location. Sorry, we have been mistaken here it will be code and it will be super base test and now it will open in the project directory so let's close this one don't save and here we have the project ready so we will just remove this counter or let it be here and here we will write our code for that we need to install the dependency or package for super base so here if we come to the website 
here you can see we have this flutter we can move to the documentation from here so for here we can find all the documentation related to superbase authentication and all that stuff so from here you can learn anything so that's what will be the reference and we will be learning the different operations related to database performing sign up and sign in on authentication service everything can be found here also here we have the flutter library so tap on it and you can see we have it here so i will copy it from here then in the pubspec.yml file i will add this line and then command plus s or control plus s on windows and this flutter pub get will start and it will install the dependency after it is installed we can utilize it in our main file here to initialize our super base project for that let's go back to the project from here and we have this url and super base key so i will copy these lines and we'll paste it here so we'll create these two constants one is super base url so we will use this url to connect to our project and then we have the super base key here and they have uh, utilized environment they have stored it securely in environment and then they are taking the key from environment but here since it's a test project that i will remove after the tutorial so i don't want to keep my key hidden so i will just paste it here and i will utilize these keys then here i will add async then we need to add widgets flutter binding dot ensure initialize to make sure the widgets bindings are initialized after that we will use await and we have the super base and then initialize method just like we use in firebase but here in the initialize method we have the parameter url so we will provide this url and this is the url we have it here that is given to us by super base so i will use this super base url and then we also have this unknown key so i will also add this this is the key that we have here that is also provided by super base let me make the editor a bit small and now we can use the super base key so our super base project setup is complete it's pretty simple more easier and uh, you don't have to do much work to connect to super base unlike firebase where you need to do lots of configurations in order to connect and these configurations are specific to different platforms. but here you just need to run this line of code and you need to provide these parameters so that's the setup so i will launch my emulator sorry simulator so open it now let's run our code so i will press ctrl function f5 on mac to start my project in debugging mode and our xcode build is done and it will show on the emulator now and you can see here we have super base init completed which means we are connected to super base it's that simple and now we can interact with super base here this is our project dashboard here we can explore the different services we have we have the database here and it's loading table we don't have any yet here we have the different schemas etc from here we can create a table so let's create a new table with the name users we can also add some description we can enable row level security or not we just leave it for now from here we have this id and also we have this created we can add other columns like name for user and similarly it will be of type string which is text here then we can also add another column to set age it will be of type integer for, uh, integer 4 or integer add so it is either 4 byte integer add byte integer so let's give it integer 4 it will be enough for age so we can add columns just like that we have different types here 
like if we go there we have different type of integers then float numeric json json b text variable character similarly uid date time timestamp etc boolean so we can create columns of all of these types so that's how we create a table here i just need the name and age here so that's enough so i will save it ensure that all columns are named okay i need to remove this column so and the column has been removed now here i will tick mark it sorry i don't need to tick mark it because it's primary and we have only these two columns set as primary keys and i will uncheck the name and age and here we need to remove it the column has been removed and now i can tap on save to create the table and the table has been created you can see we have this user table we have these four columns in the user table the id and it was selected as primary key similarly created it was also a primary key and then we have these two normal columns or properties in the table which is name and age we can add new columns as well so that's how we create a table we can also add foreign key etc so it's sql you can play around with it so that's how we create tables and similarly we have functions triggers indexes etc we can also specify roles and we can add policies policies are like firebase rules that we create and based on that policies access is granted to users so we can explore all of that then if we come here we have this authentication service from here we can add users we have the policies here we can add policy we can create a policy from here so these are some of the different policies that we can select that is given by superbase we can also create our own policies but let's cancel it for now it's out of the scope of the video here we have the different providers we have in a email enabled by default we can also enable phone authentication similarly we have google and all other top auth providers here with us here we can apply some rate limiting on authentication request we have the email templates here like confirmation sign up we have this template and this sample email is sent to the user when he signs up for the first time and it is for the email verification you can also play around with it to change it and the custom email will be sent to the user similarly user invitation magic link change email address etc so these these are the different email templates that you can play around with it here we have some url configurations here we can provide our site url etc so these are the different things that we can play around with from here providers if we tap on email you can hear disable e confirmation email for sign up if you disable it then confirmation email is not required and any user can sign up directly without email confirmation so you can enable disable it from here similarly you have other setup as well like disable this email provider then you have other options as well you can select email or otp length and also the expiration time so here you can play around so if we come to user here i will add a user so let's create a user and here let's add some email address like khan123 at gmail.com it's a dummy email and let's give it some password and auto confirm user we don't need to send the confirmation email just create the user for now and i will close this and you can see we have our user created here it's the uid of the user then we have the email etc and we have the last sign in at etc and when the user was created what was the provider so it was simple email provider so that's why it shows email so that's how we create users here and we can play around with all those things we have the filters here we can sort user by created at created that etc and we also have the different providers here we can also select the providers from here to filter out 
here we can search for email phone or uid etc and based on that we can search for different users so it's really handy and you can play around with it quite easily then we have the storage here we can create new buckets and like if i give the name test bucket let's make it public and save it it will create us a storage bucket we can drag and drop files here or we can upload it to code we can also set some policies here and based on that policies we can restrict access to the storage bucket so you can play around with it similarly we have the edge functions here so for that we need to create this function and then we will be interacted with this service then we also have the real time with this we can listen to changes in real time in our application so these are the services we will be using in the upcoming tutorials similarly we have a table editor here so here we can create table let's give it the name the same like we gave it users and then we will be using these columns etc so it's pretty much the same thing but it's a table editor we can see everything here so we have this user table that we created from the database section and you can see here we can import data using csv file or we can directly insert from here so let's insert a row here we can provide the name you can see we have the age and name properties that we set these two are primary keys and they are set automatically so let's give it the name khan and the age will be 15 and save it you can see we have a user added in the table and the primary key has been assigned to the user automatically similarly they created add timestamp and then the two columns that we set for that user one is the name and others age and the values are being stored here in database so we can also interact with the database using this table editor as well that is more convenient similarly we have this sql editor here as well so here we can uh, also write sql queries instead of the table editor so it's your own choice if you want to interact with the table or you want this sql editor to write sql queries that will be handling all the operations on the database like you can create a user in that table etc so you can write everything here just like we have the create table and then we can call it like uh, products and then you will be specifying all the properties etc so that's how you can play with it and you can write sql queries to handle the sql database so that's all about interface of superbase and we have set up our flutter project to interact with superbase and uh, that's it for today's video we have covered how to connect our flutter project to superbase and then we also explored the different services in superbase and how we can interact with it using the user interface in the next video we will be covering how we can implement superbase authentication in flutter so make sure you watch the video and don't miss it out that's it we will see you in the next video goodbye